This is Vader Reviews. We are honored that you would join us as we celebrate Independence Day. Today, we remember the birth of our great nation and the men and women who have given their lives for the freedoms we hold dear. This 4th of July, as we spend time with our families enjoying our hot dogs and fireworks display. Let us come together in a spirit of brotherhood from sea to shining sea. As one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize Elizabeth Mulliken, for her generous support. You are a hero of the Empire, and will have your name listed on the end credits of our upcoming fan film, Fallen Jedi. Elizabeth Mulliken, the Empire thanks you for your service. If you would like to support Vader Reviews and keep the channel alive, donate to our PayPal today and do your part for the Empire. A link is in the description. Join the Empire today and become a hero of the Empire. Now with that out of the way, what better way to celebrate the good old USA than by reviewing Captain America, the first Avenger, directed by Joe Johnston and released on July 22nd. 2011. Based on the true blue American hero created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, Captain America has become one of the flagship characters of the wildly popular Marvel Cinematic Universe. Our film tells the inspiring story of Steve Rogers, a lovable underdog who longs for a chance to do his part and fight for what is right. Set against the backdrop of the largest and most important conflict in human history, and featuring Chris Evans as our star-spangled star of the picture, Captain America is more than a great comic hero or adventure film. At its heart, it is the crystallization of the American dream, the ideal that the little guy can work to achieve his goals, and that honor, integrity, and freedom are worth defending. Steve's super steroid use also harkens back to the 1990s era of America's favorite pastime, baseball. And like an army of G.I. Joes all rolled into one, Captain America is a home run. A core message of the film is that no matter how much power or success you attain in life, what matters most is your character and who you choose to be as a person. And while some may say this film and what it represents are old-fashioned, as Agent Coulson told Cap in The Avengers, we could use a little old-fashioned right about now. Joe Johnston, who served as the art director at Industrial Light and Magic on Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981, was chosen to direct this film due to his work on the 1991 adventure classic, The Rocketeer another comic-based film featuring an American hero facing off against a third-rate Third Reich. Speaking of which, Hugo Weaving gives a bone-chilling performance as a sauerkraut named Johann Schmidt, also known as the Red Skull. And from the first time this goose-stepping goon drives up in his Cruella de Vil car, he's bad news. Fun fact, Schmidt's car was eight feet wide and custom built on a modified truck chassis. Measuring 25 feet in length, it required a 700 horsepower Drexler engine due to its weight. Hugo Weaving based his accent for the Red Skull on renowned German filmmaker Werner Herzog, who I'll always remember as the creepy old guy on The Mandalorian. Interestingly, Schmidt is German for Smith, making this the second time He's played a villain named Smith, the first being Agent Smith in The Matrix. It also marks the second time he has played a villain 
seeking a powerful cosmic artifact shaped like a cube. In this film, it is the Tesseract. In Transformers, Weaving, who voiced Megatron, sought the Allspark, proving whether it's a machine, computer program, or crazy German. No bones about it, Hugo Weaving plays a great bad guy. Now the film like America itself, though great, is far from perfect. Several action scenes of Captain America fighting the war were edited down to a single montage sequence to limit the number of guns shown in this film, which is completely ridiculous. The Red Skull wasn't utilized nearly as much as he should have been. Being a dark version of Cap, we should have seen more examples of his raw power. And while the old bonehead could fight Cap till he was red in the face, we never got an iconic battle between the two of them. When it comes to nitpicking, I could do this all day. But seriously, Peggy Carter's personality made their romance fall completely flat for me. So the ending wasn't as emotional as it otherwise could have been. And since Cap jumps out of a plane into the ocean and survives in Winter Soldier, going down with the plane in this film comes off as contrived drama. So for those reasons, while Captain America is a fun and exciting superhero film, with a patriotic film score by Alan Silvestri and stellar performances by Chris Evans, Hugo Weaving, and Tommy Lee Jones, I give Captain America the first Avenger a solid three out of five Death Stars. This has been Vader Reviews. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Happy Independence Day. God bless you all, and God bless America.